What's up guys? This is Manoj Shaptani. I welcome you all on behalf of the Edupedia world. Guys, by now we have already covered two of our presentations relating to the topic of portfolio management in which I have already discussed with you some of the relevant portion with respect to this particular core topic. Now, in this particular presentation, which is going to be the third one for this chapter, I'm going to discuss with you about a bit more relating towards the theory part, who was Markowitz, what is uh, Efficient Frontier, all these things. Okay, you'll get to know about all these things in this particular presentation. So I just hope that you guys must have revised your topics, the thing which I've already made you understand in my previous presentations, you are definitely going through all of them. Let's mark the beginning of this particular presentation, which is going to be the third one. First on our basic bills, we are about to take off with it. And the first topic would be about random walk theory. Guys, as the name is suggesting in itself, random, what do I mean by random? Random is something wherein there is no set pattern. Okay. There is no set pattern in which things are moving. Okay. Random can be a walk. Okay. Random can be the prices. Random can be anything. Random information. Whenever and wherever there is no set pattern. Okay. There is no set preferences, no set pattern in which information is flowing up or maybe prices are flowing up or anything is flowing up in the country. That is something which is random. Okay. Now, since the word is random work theory, if I'm incorporating this particular word in my portfolio management chapter, then there is something in which I am comparing this random thing with my stock prices. Correct. Bullseye. So you got it absolutely right, guys. This theory is all about something which is telling you that if there is a, some kind of change in the stock prices, okay, tomorrow, if you wake up and you find Reliance stock trending at around 800, okay, and you sleep by that day and tomorrow, the next morning, you wake up and you see that the prices are flowing at 500, okay, then again, on the next day, you find prices are flowing around 1000. There is no set pattern, okay, you can't do and go ahead with your fundamental analysis, you can't do and go ahead with your technical analysis. And certainly, you guys are pretty much unsure what is happening into the market. Okay, then why is it happening? Okay, why all these random things are happening? So as per this particular theory, it says that whatever the changes are going into the stock prices, they are independent of each other. The price of today are independent of the past trends. Whatever has already happened with the Reliance company in the past, today's stock price has got nothing to do with it. Okay, your today's price is absolutely free and independent of any of the thing which has happened in the past. Any past trends certainly is definitely not going to affect your current price. Okay, the present price is randomly determined and only the information flow can influence the price. What do I mean by information flow? Let's suppose I just got to know that there is a company ABC market in the stock. Now, tomorrow I just got to hear about this news that there is fire which has just break down in their factory. Okay. And they have got their largest plant in some part of India. And since this information is really, really imperative for that particular company's growth and stock. So once it runs like anything, this particular information reaches like runs like fire into the market. Okay. The fire has actually break down in the factory in one of the prominent factories of this particular company. What's going to happen is the share price is absolutely going to take and go for a toss. Okay. Now the thing is it will fall like anything. Okay. And in the first two days, the prices are going to get impacted and affected miserably. That is for sure. So it also is about this random work theory is that your present price is randomly determined and only information flow can influence your price. So this is the information that the fire has broken down in their factory. So this is something which is gonna be definitely influencing your price. Why? Because this is something which is happening, happening in present term. We are not supposed to take care of anything which has already happened in the past. That is something which is not gonna be impacting your prices. But whatever the information about the company, about the industry comes out, that is going to be impacting your present prices if the information is relating to your present scenario. And that is why it is being said that the present price is randomly determined. And since we know that information is free and independent, 
the resultant prices are free and independent this is what random walk theory talks entirely about its equation now second thing comes into the picture is what all are the assumptions of random walk theory so guys like any other theory we know this thing that any of the person who have made some theories in the past or they are making some theories in the present they always take some amount of assumptions okay they always take because theory is something which is definitely not foolproof okay you can't apply one theory in all the scenarios there are some assumptions which have to be taken in order to ensure that yes this theory works into this particular area that's it so assumptions of random walk theory number one is that the market is supreme okay and no individual investor or group can influence it obviously market is very big market is giant so certainly if there is an individual investor or a group of investors they can't influence the market in totality that is number one assumption for a random walk theory though this thing is certainly not completely 100 percent uh, going ahead by this assumption because there are people like warren buffet and there are people like uh, rakesh Junjunwala in india they are the supreme uh, people into the stock market okay and they are the individual investors but still they influence the market to a bit okay i won't say that they don't influence it definitely not they certainly influence the market with their decisions whatever they take with a particular stocks or uh, some kind of securities so market is supreme but no individual investor or group can influence it that is the number one assumption of random work theory number two stock prices discount all information quickly so what does this assumption means is that whatever the kind of information which is going in, into the market okay the stock prices are going to absorb that information very quickly okay now supposedly the stock of abc market was trending at 800 rupees and this knowledge of fire breakdown came into the picture and market is going to be absorbing this particular information very quickly okay so now since it was printing at 800 rupees it's going to fall now it will be like starting to fall from now on okay and it will touch the mark of 700 then 600 then 500 so what this particular assumption is that the stock prices basically absorb all the information very quickly okay that is what number two assumption of uh, random work theory is number three is markets are efficient and that the flow of the information is free and unbiased okay so again this is entirely linked with the second aspect okay if you are getting some information quickly and you are absorbing that information so what's going to happen is your overall market is going to be efficient wonderful so since the markets are going to be efficient i can simply say that the flow of information will always remain free and unbiased okay whatever the information which is going ahead in the market that will be like free and definitely it's going to help the market to be efficient all the time number four prices move in an independent fashion okay you can't judge uh, what's going to happen in the very next moment something big can happen something small can happen or maybe there is no difference okay so prices move in a very independent fashion it may go up it may go down you're not supposed to take care of it because this random work theory states it okay lastly it says all the investors have got free access to the same information and nobody has got the knowledge or insider information this is something which is just an assumption guys this is something which doesn't prevail in the current market because i've got my friends who are working with some of the good uh, brokerage houses then there are a few of my friends who are working with some good industries okay so whatever things usually it happens into the in their company or maybe in their brokerage houses i usually get the information far quick uh, as what's happening into the market okay what's gonna happen into the market in the next maybe 10 minutes or maybe 15 minutes or half an hour next to go i usually get that information so i won't say that market is free of any kind of in insider information that's certainly not the case okay there are many people who are taking the advantage of insider trading and certainly there are people who are having that better knowledge but then this particular assumption it clearly states that all the investors have got free access to same information and nobody has got the better knowledge or insider trading why is it uh, basically being told as an assumption for random walk theory because there is a reason guys random walk theory's main basis is all about one thing which is that the stock prices are independent of each other and secondly the markets are going to be really efficient because the flow of information is free and unbiased now what if i tell you that there are uh, some investors who have got the knowledge about some excessive information which is the better knowledge okay and they have got some insider information 
So is this information be like referred to as the same information which is available to all the people? Absolutely not. Can I say that the information flow will be like free and unbiased in this case? Absolutely not. And then can I say about this thing that since all these things are happening, the market will be like efficient? Absolutely not. So since my other assumptions and my core basis of random walk theory is going to be hit badly. If in case I'm not incorporating this fifth assumption, it is really important to have this one here, which is that all investors have got the free access to same information and nobody has got the better knowledge of insider information. This was all about random walk theory. I made you understand this topic with a lot many examples as well. So do try to retain it. Okay, because my understanding will help you up only and only if in case you guys are revising your topics time and again. Remember that. Let's move towards the next topic, which is the degrees of efficiency. What do I mean by degrees of efficiency? Guys, in the market, if I'll talk about, there are three different scenarios. Number one is weak efficiency form. Number two is semi-strong efficiency form. And lastly, is a pioneer which is strong efficiency so let's start with the first one which is weak efficiency what do i mean by weak efficiency guys we all know this thing that uh, the stock prices are basically influenced with the information okay the trends and the information which is going ahead into the market what would be a weak efficiency form into the market that will only be if in case all the past prices of the stock are reflected in today's price okay just the past prices I have got the knowledge about whatever has happened into the past with this particular stock. I have got the trends which are relating to the past and these trends have helped me up in uh, reflecting my today's stock price. That's it. So I simply say can say that technical analysis cannot be used to predict and beat the market if in case you are going ahead with a weak efficiency. Why? Because your stock price is reflecting just your past prices and your trends. Okay. So whatever thing has already happened in your past, your today's price is just the answer to it. Okay. So can you use your technical analysis, your fundamental analysis to uh, beat and predict the market? No, you can't because technical analysis and all these things comes into the picture when you are referring to your present and other information as well. But weak efficiency form doesn't support you for all these information. It just provides you the past prices and that is what is reflected in your today's stock price. So this was about weak efficiency. Nowadays, do weak efficiency prevail? That is something which I, I want to make you understand beyond your textbooks. No, absolutely not. Weak efficiency doesn't go ahead in today's scenario. Today's scenario is working between semi-strong and strong. Okay, so weak efficiency is something which you read in your textbooks, but does it happen in the real world? No, guys, absolutely not. So I'm here to let you know about the practical world as well. Okay, I'm not teaching you just about the theoretical aspects. So you can really be free about this thing that yes, weak efficiency doesn't work in today's scenario. Next one comes in as semi-strong efficiency. What do I mean by semi-strong efficiency? Semi-strong efficiency is that form of the market, okay, wherein all the public information is calculated in the today's share price. What do I mean by today's public information, okay? All the past prices which have already happened, all the past trends, plus any form of today's present information, okay? Whatever thing which is available in the market today. Let's suppose we just got to know that about the PNB scam, okay? Uh, Mr. Nira Modi took uh, a few crores. I'll say a few crores because I don't know whether something is going to be happening into the government or not because they'll be considering it only as few crores. <laughs> Can't say about whether they consider the same as very hefty amount or not so but still so he has taken up a few crores of our country okay to another country and now this information was publicly available okay and once it was like publicly available the stock price of pnb hit very badly okay so was this event a public information yes it is during that particular point of time the pnb stock prices was affecting due to two things now number one Whatever the past prices and the trends which were going into the market with respect to PNB, number one. And secondly, they just got to know and attach their past prices and trends information with the public information which was available and which is that Nirav Modi's loan just got NPA and suddenly he, he left the country. So these two information got together and what happened to the stock price? It just went down because 
semi strong efficiency is something which claims all the public information and this thing is incorporated into your current stock price so here i can simply say that you can't even use your technical analysis to achieve the superior gains no you can't because you are certainly aware of this information that this is a very big public information and it has just hit the market okay and you can't help really about it okay so whatever the kind of fundamental analysis even if you are sure about one thing that yes pnb is a very fantabulous bank and certainly it's going to like bloom like anything in the near future to come but still the current information has hit this particular company stock price miserably so neither your fundamental analysis nor your technical analysis can be used to achieve those superior gains okay you can simply go ahead with one thing which is you need to buy it at lower prices and then you can sell the stock when once it touches some good mark so this is what semi strong information is all about and lastly strong efficiency this is going to be the strongest version which states that all the information in the market whether public or private is accounted for in a stock price anything okay this is going to be the strongest one are we really able to achieve this target of uh, having the strongest uh, efficiency firm in the market till now no not completely okay because even today uh, we are still relying on the public information okay there are many things which are going into the company okay which are private there are just something which is uh, restricted that information is restricted to the top personals confidential and certainly that is not something which comes out on a regular basis so this is, is going to be the strongest version if in case all the information in the market whether it is public or private the same is helping up in accounting for your stock price so not even insider information could give an investor an advantage in this case let's suppose i get a chance uh, to hear about some story from one of my friend that something is going to be happening in that company in the next half an hour so i i will be the one person i will try my level best to tap into that opportunity okay i'll try my best to tap in those opportunity and get the arbitrage gain but then what if is a scenario of strongest efficiency okay will i be able to make that uh, particular advantage to my profit no i won't be because in that case not even the in insider information could give me an advantage because this information is already available into the market and that is something which is already accounted for in the strongest form in taking care of the stock price this was all about the weak efficiency semi strong efficiency and strong efficiency i hope you guys got the complete understanding with each one of them wonderful let's go ahead with the third one which is harry markowitz modern portfolio theory guys this guy is the father and hats off to all his uh, fundamentals and all his things which uh, the theories which he have shared in the past i have read them he, this guy was a very big visionary i can simply tell you about this thing a nobel prize winner Harry Markowitz. So, what does uh, modern portfolio theory says? Modern portfolio theory is a very sound method for many investors to establish a very disciplined approach to investing. So, this was the basic portfolio theory which was originated by Harry Markowitz in early nineteen fifties, and for that only he received a Nobel Prize as well. What his theory was all about? Okay, now uh, let's come to the main conclusion about this uh, person's main theory. Okay, he has made a theory in so many pages. i am just making you aware about the basic stuff that he has provided to us his theory has showed us that all the information which is needed to choose the best portfolio for any of the given level of risk is contained in three simple statistics not dividend policy not about earnings not about market share not any common strategy not any form of uh, management nothing in just three simple statistics which is number 1 mean number 2 standard deviation and number 3 their correlation that's it his understanding about any of the stock was with respect to these three things what is the mean by mean he simply says what is the return that your company stock price basically assures to provide to its investors number 2 what is the risk that is your standard deviation what is the form of risk that uh, you'll have to take in order to assure for that return and how about the correlation between them so this was all about harry markowitz brain okay he just simply told the entire world that your company's basic thing okay your company's return stock prices are something which is just not influenced by the kind of dividend that you are paying by the kind of earnings that you are making or your market share your strategy nothing 
your entire scenario and your entire stock prices are going to be like uh, getting the fair idea with the help of just the incorporation of three things the three level and three statistics mean standard deviation and correlation so the markets approach is built around return and risk the return is the mean of the probability distributions and the variance is the proxy of risk efficient portfolios are defined on the basis of return and risk and that is what the portfolio management is all about if i'll tell you about the second name for portfolio management many of the textbook writers basically write it as return and risk they don't say it as portfolio management portfolio management is basically about only these two things what is your return that you are expecting out of the market and what form of risk are you willing to bear for it that is what portfolio management is all about and that is what harry markowitz modern portfolio theory stated clear guys wonderful though this question won't appear in your examination because it's going to be a theoretical one but still it was really imperative for me to make you aware about this person okay this is the father of modern finance harry markowitz next one is efficient frontier so a portfolio is said to be efficient when when will you say that you are already having a portfolio wherein you have kept around let's say 8 to 10 uh, stocks different stocks okay your portfolio will be said as an efficient one only if in case there is no other portfolio which is having the same standard deviation with greater expected return absolutely number 1 your portfolio is something wherein you are getting your maximum return for that same standard deviation for the same level of risk you are having the highest amount of return okay this is going to be the most efficient portfolio and your portfolio your frontier will be called as efficient only if in case you have got no portfolio which is having the same standard deviation with a greater expected return number 1 or there is no portfolio with the same return but with lesser standard deviation again so in this form you can say that your portfolio is really efficient so the efficient frontier is nothing but the collection of all the efficient portfolios just look into this picture this thing which uh, has been incorporated into my presentation guys this is the y axis side okay and here it's called as return this is the x axis side and here it is called as risk okay this is the curve that is being made okay this curve is nothing but the efficient frontier okay so which is going to be the most efficient portfolio in this case is this one because here it is the most efficient portfolio if i'll talk about this point here you'll be having higher amount of risk that's right but for the same thing you will have to take care of higher return as well higher risk and higher return area this one here if i'll talk about here it's lower risk and lower return area you will be aiming for some amount of risk okay you want some moderate risk or lower risk but then you'll have to be happy with your lower return here you'll be having you'll be taking up the maximum amount of risk but at the same time you're having your higher return as well okay if i'll talk about this area what do you think this area is going to be the perfect one why guys because here if i'll talk about the efficient portfolio you're taking and bearing the minimum risk that is the lower risk if i'll talk about okay the lower risk you are getting in this one but at the same time you are touching the bar of maximum return so the highest uh, return in the form of lower risk okay this is going to be the most efficient portfolio for your case and in the adversity in just the opposite side of this is the maximum risk that you are bearing that is the maximum risk but at the same time very low return if i'll talk about this one so is it a efficient portfolio definitely not is this the efficient portfolio definitely not or is this the efficient portfolio not this is the one which is being termed as efficient portfolio and this is available into your efficient frontier and this efficient frontier will be like having a collection of all the portfolios all the efficient portfolios so are you guys thorough and clear with it which one is the efficient portfolio which one is the inefficient one i hope you guys are clear with efficient frontier as well shall we proceed further with the next topic guys yes so the topic is relating to risks and diversification again the very mool mantra which was shared by me in the very first presentation diversification what do i mean by diversification guys 
and why I have incorporated this particular uh, topic into my presentation. You will get to know. Diversification number one. Remember guys, mantra, never put all your eggs into the one basket. Okay. Always divide your portfolio into different stocks. Okay. Number one thing. This is what diversification is all about. I have already made you understand. Now what I will do is, I will just correlate these two terms together and you will get to have a very fair idea by as to I have incorporated this in this one. Guys, there are two forms of risk. Number one is systematic risk. Number two is unsystematic risk. What do I mean by systematic risk? A risk which cannot be diversified away. That is what systematic risk is. You just reach your home, okay, after schooling, okay. Remember those days when you used to come back from school and your mother used to shout on you, why are you throwing your bag here and there? Why are you throwing your bottles here and there? Why are you throwing your clothes here and there? Remember guys, we all went through this kind of phase in our lives. Okay, we used to be crazy, bizarre kids all the time. And we just used to throw all our stuff here and there. Okay, what used to be the first thing which used to come up as a response from our mother? That has to be one thing. Can't you be systematic? Okay, so that is one thing which I usually get in my uh, thing. Wherever I think about systematic, the word systematic. Can't you be systematic with your walking? Okay, just put in your everything in the right places. So systematic, if I'll incorporate that thing here as well, systematic is something wherein you can't change after beyond getting something into the systematic phase. You've got systematic things. Now, can you do anything about it? Can you change something after it? No, you can't. You've already kept your bottle at its right place. So beyond that, is there some kind of condition wherein your mother will be like asking you that now uh, something more is required to be done? No. The, Systematic thing has already uh, reached to its places. So the entire process now is now systematic. So can I do anything beyond this? No, absolutely not. So this is one form of risk which cannot be diversified away. That is what systematic risk is all about. This risk is primarily with economy. Okay, Whatever is going ahead in the economy, that is something which will be in consideration and concern with systematic risk. On the other side, if I'll talk about the unsystematic risk, this is something which can be diversified away. Why? Because that is something which is relating to just a mere company or an industry. Something is going ahead in the in aviation market. Okay. And you got to know that the fuel prices are going up. So what's going to happen is the, the stock prices of the aviation companies are going to hit badly. Okay. They'll start going down. So what can be done is you just move out of that portfolio. Okay. That uh, aviation portfolio and just use that money and invest that in some other portfolio, which is not going to be hit badly. So this risk is basically something which can be diversified away okay you can do something about it it is not something related to economy that is something which is related to only company or industry so that is what unsystematic risk is all about systematic risk measure remember guys beta is one unsystematic risk you don't have a measure because standard deviation is basically the measure of total risk so total risk is something which is systematic risk plus unsystematic risk so wherever i talk about standard deviation that is something which will be a measure of total risk. Wherever I tell something about systematic risk, a beta will be the measure for it. This is what risk is all about. And lastly, the major thing which is risk and diversification. So the principle of diversification states that spreading an investment across many assets will eliminate some of the risks which are diversifiable. Remember guys, the example which I just made you understand, you got to know that there is something happening really bad in the aviation market. So What's going to be done by your end? Okay, simple. You just need to eliminate some of your risk, okay, which is diversifiable. How? By spreading your investment across many assets. So, the principle of diversification states that spreading an investment across many assets will eliminate some of the risk, which is diversifiable. And this was all about the risk and diversification part. I hope you guys have liked this video. Certainly you guys would have found it useful and informative as well. I have talked about so many things with you. I have made you understand so many things about these core principles. Just like, share and subscribe to our channel and uh, just help us in spreading the knowledge across worldwide. I'll see you with my next presentation with a lot more topics to be discussed. Till then, take care of yourself. Stay in good spirit. Sayonara. God bless you all. Bye.